Alrighty, get out, everyone. Welcome to the long-awaited next episode of BioBoost with uh, with Mr. Marinelli. So, uh, what we're going to try and quickly cover today in one lesson, in one 15-minute video, is all of the specific third line of defense. Okay. Um, now, essentially, what we're going to do is be able to describe how the whole process works. So, antigen presentation to start with, then look at both the humoral and the cell-mediated responses. So we're going to get straight into it. Um, first thing is antigen presentation. Okay, so this is where our second line of defense merges and helps out with our third line of defense. Okay, so I'll move my little space over here. So let's go through the process of this quickly because I want to focus on that specific line um, most of all. So antigen presentation. Basically, our first step is that a virus or a bacteria gets into the body. Okay, so it gets into our living tissues, so it's surpassed and gotten through the first line of defense, which is trying to prevent us from getting or prevent the pathogen from getting into our living tissues, and now it's in. Okay, so let's imagine it's a virus. Uh, the pathogen is engulfed by an antigen presenting cell. Okay, so that could either be our macrophages, our dendritic cells, or also be lymphocytes but typically we talk about macrophages and dendritic cells. What happens next? The foreign material, it gets put in a phagosome, which is basically just an outpouching or an impouching of the plasma membrane, we can see over here. And then it merges with a lysosome, you know, lysosome, it's gonna break stuff down. So it mixes it with that into what's called a phagolysosome and breaks it down and digests it. When it exocytoses that material, it will also put some of that um, antigen, some of those peptides, those proteins that are the antigens, on its surface. And it puts them on MHC2 receptors. Okay, so that's really important. Antigen presenting cells put these fragments on MHC2 receptors. Basically, then these antigen presenting cells, now that they've engulfed some pathogen and they're displaying these things now travel to lymph nodes okay and when they're in the lymph nodes they will try and present them to a naive helper t cell now naive doesn't mean immature it's still mature helper t cell it just hasn't gone undergone uh, clonal selection yet it hasn't found its missing antigen okay so this is still specific. It's still a very specific helper T cell, but it just hasn't come across anything that it likes yet. Now, finally, this APC brings it to the lymph node, and what do you know? This helper T cell finds its match. Basically, that is antigen presentation. What happens next is that the helper T cells undergo, so that was clonal selection. It was selected. Now it goes, uh, undergoes clonal expansion where it will start to produce more copies of itself. And then those helper T cells will assist in activating the specific immune response. And it does that by releasing interleukins. Inter meaning between and leukins referring to leukocytes or our white blood cells and basically communicating with those other white blood cells, meaning our B cells and our T cells. Okay, so you can see that happening in this picture here. So let's go through the first of those. Let's go through the humoral response. Okay, so if we look down here, we find this little flow chart I've made up. The cells involved in the adaptive immune response antigen presentation. Now we go left to the humoral response. So now here we have all the cell types that are involved in this process. We've got our APCs, we've got our T helper cells, Please remember that helper T cells are part of this process as well. You will lose marks if you say that one of the differences between humoral response and um, cell mediated response is that the humoral response is B cells and cell mediated is T cells. Remember that humoral response also has some T cells involved. All right, so uh, we also have our plasma B cells, memory B cells, and naive B cells. Okay, so let's go through these steps. Basically, um, these first couple of steps are what we've just covered, so the antigen presentation part of it. 
it can also come, that antigen can also come into contact with naive B cells. So these are B cells that have very specific receptors, okay, or these antibodies on their surface that are floating around waiting to also be picked. They're naive because they haven't been activated yet. That's what naive means. So they can also come into contact naturally with an antigen, okay, and that is called again clonal selection. So here we see antigen X coming into contact naturally with a naive B cell. Notice as well that helper T cells also may bind to that antigen and release cytokines to attract more complementary naive B cells. The mixture of these two things acts to activate that naive B cell, which now proliferates into our plasma B cells. Okay? Not only does it create plasma B cells, which are going to be our big workhorses, it also produces memory B cells. We'll talk about them in a bit. So basically, when it differentiates and expands, clonal expansion, it makes heaps and heaps of plasma cells. These plasma cells absolutely go nuts and release as many antibodies as they can. It's something like 30,000 antibodies per second per cell. Okay, so this is a ridiculous amount of protein that it's releasing into the blood. Uh, and those antibodies uh, go into a whole range of actions to help to combat extracellular threats. Okay, because remember these antigens, uh, these antibodies, I should say, only um, help with things that are outside the body. That means outside the cells. Okay, um, once a pathogen is inside a cell, the antibodies can't see them anymore. They're just floating around in the blood, hoping to bind to where they're complementary. If it's already inside the cell, it can't do anything about that. Okay, so as we know, the actions of antibodies are numerous, and we remember the acronym Piano C. And a whole bunch of those actions are contained down here. So we have things like agglutination, uh, neutralization, op opsonization, precipitation. So a whole bunch of different actions that antibodies do, uh, and that all helps to overcome an infection. Now, the reason that this is great is that not only can you fight an infection in a very specific way when it comes into the body, but you get these memory B cells that persist in your lymphoid tissue, so in our lymph nodes, in our spleen, that will last a long time. Okay, now you don't need to say lifelong immunity. In fact, you shouldn't say lifelong immunity because that isn't always the case, which is why we need booster vaccinations and things like that but you can say it results in long-term immunity. And if you're asked what happens upon subsequent exposure, upon subsequent exposure, you've already got memory B cells, which are already ready to divide um, rapidly with a more powerful response, okay? So that's what happens. That's why our graph always looks like this. And then it goes up a lot higher and a lot faster before it goes back down. Okay, so that's humoral response. It's pretty nice and easy. Okay, that's it. Now let's go back up here and let's go across to our cell mediated. Okay, now this is cell mediated because this destroys cells. Okay, our humoral response has antibodies that dissolve in the blood, which is why it's a humoral response, it's in fluid, and binds to extracellular threats, things with those antigens. Okay. This seems like it's going to be more complicated, but it's really not, okay? So the cells that are involved are APCs, helper T cells, naive T cells, cytotoxic T cells, and memory T cells, okay? Now, great. We have the same steps as before. Our antigen enters the body and is engulfed by an antigen-presenting cell. Next, our antigen-presenting cells digest these pathogens and display some of those proteins, those antigens, on their MHC2 markers. Okay, we see that up here with this pink cell. Again, it goes to the lymph nodes, and our helper T cells come into contact with that MHC2 marker. You'll often see CD4 listed. All T cells have T cell receptors, which are called TCRs, but our helper T cells have CD4, which enables it to bind to MHC2 markers. And our cytotoxic T cells have what's called TCD8, uh, which means that it only binds to MHC1 markers. OK, 
Okay, I'll talk about that in a second. So um, we have our naive helper T cells, which are basically getting clonally selected if they bind with that MHC2 marker. Uh, then they divide into activated helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells. Okay, we can call these effector T cells, but I think it's probably better just to stick to activated help T cells and cytotoxic T cells. So interleukins um, are released by these T helper cells and that stimulates further activation of T cells. So it's sort of just building up the process even more. Finally, now that you've got these cytotoxic T cells, what they're going to do is go and bind to cells that have MHC1 markers that are showing abnormal proteins. So you can think about it like this. It's kind of like a muffin shop and you put muffins in the windows. You put a big muffin sign on top of the roof because muffins are what are getting produced inside the cell. That tells you that's the muffin shop. Now, if you um, have an invader that is a pizza maker and he's inside the shop, he's making pizzas instead, he'll start putting pizza in the window. He'll start putting pizza on the roof. And if you're walking along there and you're the muffin uh, shop um, you know, person who's checking that all the muffin shops are okay, um, you'll notice that there's all those pizza there. So you'll bind to that building and you'll bind to their MHC marker, their window, and you'll say, no, nah, this shop has to get destroyed now. It's been invaded by the pizza maker, okay? That's what, what, that's what cytotoxic T cells do. They find our cells that have been infected by viruses. Okay? They know that because the proteins that are getting put on their MHC1 markers, which are usually self proteins, are abnormal in some way. That could also be cancerous as well. And that's how they know they have to trigger apoptosis in those cells. So what they do is they basically bind to I won't go into the details, but these FAS ligand receptors, which are basically death receptors, they release perforin, which, as we can see down here, uh, makes the permeability of the wall uh, of the cell membrane more, which allows them to put in granzyme B. Now, granzyme B is basically an enzyme that assists in triggering apoptosis in the infected cell. Okay? Um, what you're also left with is a bunch of memory T cells which is exactly the same situation as our memory B cells. If you ever come into contact with that antigen again on the surface of a, um, of a cell, okay, you've come across a cell and you're like, hey, the muffin shop has been turned into a pizza shop again. It's ready already to divide, make more, and get ready to uh, ensure that you destroy all the uh, pizza makers who are infecting all the muffin shops. Okay. Uh, now, that basically sums up all of the specific response. Make sure that when you state your answers in terms of this process, you should talk about the antigens getting in and getting presented at the start. You should talk about um, the clonal selection and clonal expansion process. And then you should talk about the fact that memory cells are left over. Okay, so ensure that those four things go into the process of all those answers. All right, now I'm going to press pause because I might be able to get a guest to join me on this show. Hold up. Okay, so that was a little bit strange. I didn't realize he'd be sleeping uh, when I went down there, so I had to make lots of weird um, faces to make it entertaining. Uh, do I regret it? Maybe. Um, did you enjoy it? Probably not. Uh, was the video informative? Hopefully. Uh, will he be on more episodes of BioBoost? Definitely. Okay, so there will be more opportunities. Um, anyway, have a great uh, rest of the week. And good luck for your sack on the immune response and throughout the year for exams if you're using this to study. Um, have a great one. And thanks for another episode of BioBoost.